Hi guys and welcome to this video on midpoint and length of a line segment. I know it sounds complicated, I promise you it really, really isn't. Because you already know pretty much how to do this, with a little bit of pre-knowledge. My name's Darren Masguru, thank you very much for joining me. If you can, subscribe in the little doohickey. Just lets me know that you and my mother are watching. Thank you very much. Leave a message below if you can and you're watching on YouTube or on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. What's that all about? I know. At Maths Guru if you want to watch. This video, thank you very much Cambridge for allowing me to use your examples. This video is going to be able to find the midpoint and length of a line segment with a little bit of understanding about Pythagoras theorem. When we recap, it makes sense that we can find bits of lines, and that's effectively what a line segment is. It is a small section of a line. We know that this line here goes off to infinity and beyond. Yes, I know. I love Buzz Light. Yeah, he's my hero. All right, but he is, uh, but I only want a little bit. I've got lost. I got lost. He, we only want a small section of this line. So we've decided we would like to take a little bit of that line that goes from the point um, 0 minus 1 through to 2 comma 0. Why did I choose that? Arbitrarily. All right? Literally I've taken two points and I want to now find the middle point. I want to find somewhere along the line of the, the middle, the middle of that line. How? Now you're looking at this going, oi, easy, look, and you're probably pointing or you've switched off already, I don't know. But I hope you can see that the middle of that line would have to be there. It just has to be there. Yeah, it's the middle of the line. But how would I find the coordinate of that? You're going to say, read it off, idiot. And I'm going to say, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But what if I just gave you the two coordinates without a graph? Hmm, let me think. Hold on a moment. If we look, this line horizontally starts at zero and goes to two. So it's got a, that's got a length of two. And yet the midpoint seemingly has a coordinate of one there. Well, one seems to be half of two. Is that a bit of a coincidence? Let, let's look at the other one. Here we go. Now this one seems to be going down by one and it seems to have a coordinate of negative a half there. At least it's got a y value. Seems to be a half. Now, in a long way, what I'm trying to say to you is if you know the two x values, it's literally halfway between the two x values. If you know the two y values, it's literally halfway between the two. So if I notice my two x values were zero and two, or well, halfway between that was one. If I know my two y values went from minus one to zero, then it must be negative a half. ka -ching. thank you very much. That is the straight line. If you ever want to draw these things on Desmos, it's really easy. Take your equation, and then these curly brackets here tells you where to limit your x values to. So that means basically draw this equation here of half x minus 1 only between the values of x such that is 0 and 2. How do we find the midpoint of the line segment? Well again, as I've said, really, really easy. So long as I know my x coordinates, so again, what is this? 0 comma minus 1 and uh, 2 comma 0. If I know my x values, I can go halfway between them. If I know my y values, I go halfway between them. Now, you're going to say, is there an easy way of doing this? Absolutely, chuffingly yes. Why? Because the easiest way to find the middle of two numbers is add them together and divide by 2. So if you ever want the middle of two numbers, add them together and divide by 2. Again, let's just check that works. I've got 0 and minus 1, and I've got uh, 2 comma 0. So let's look at my x values. They're 0 and 2. Add them together. 2. Halve it gives you 1. Okay? Minus 1 and 0. So minus 1 and 0. Add them together. Minus 1. Halve them is minus a half. And ka -ching. That works every single time for every set of coordinates. Here's some examples. 1, 0 and 4, 4. Let's look at my x values. 1 and 4. Add them together. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, comma, 0 and 4. There are my y values. Add them together. 0 and 4 add together is 4 divided by 2 is 2. And I can guarantee you the midpoint is going to be given by that point there. Let's do the next example. What have we got here? Minus 3, minus 2, and 5, comma, 3. Again, don't get tricked. 
Let's look at minus 3 and 5. Add them together. Minus 3 plus 5 is 2. Halve it gives me 1. So I'm going to write an M in front of there for my midpoint. I've got minus 2 and 3. Add those together gives me 1. And halve it gives me a half. And there we go. So finding the midpoint between any two points. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Add the X's and halve them. Add the Y's and halve them. Now, this is a recap for Pythagoras' theorem. To find the length of a line, we're actually going to use the Pythagoras theorem, which in its simplest form is, or in fact only form, is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. If you're watching this in the UK, you're probably saying, no, hold on a moment, that's a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Let's not split hairs. I don't have enough left. But the point of it is, the c squared is the value here. It is the value of the hypotenuse. Or in fact, that is c. I'm not going to write the c there, because normally we give that as c. These sides here are A and B, and it doesn't matter which way around you put it, A or B. But what we know is if I take the A value and square it, and add it to the B value and square it, I get the C value and square it. Now this has everything to do with areas. That's in a separate video if you want to watch it on MathsGuru.com. Watch the Pythagoras video because it tells you he was allegedly a murderer. Shock horror. So let's have a quick look here. If I had this value here as 3, and that value there was 4, and I wanted to find this value here. Well, I can actually change my c squared equals a squared plus b squared into an alternate form. I can say, well, therefore, the value of c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if I now do this here, my value of c is equal to the square root of, well, 3 squared plus 4 squared. So that's the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25. And the square root of 25, what number multiplied by itself is 25? It gives me 5, all right? So beautiful, nice and easy to use that formula. But if we look at this 3, what does the 3 stand for? Well, 3 basically stands for the length of that line. And 4 stands for the length of that line. But in all of our previous videos, we've been finding lengths of those lines. Because we know that the length of that line is y2 minus y1, the coordinate of the top point minus the coordinate of this point here. And we know that this here is x2 minus x1. And so as it becomes, ladies and gentlemen, we can actually use that on the next screen. Not this one, the next screen. Now the great thing is we can use our CAS to be able to help us with this. So again, another example here, if I told you that that was 5, and that was 12, and to find the value of c, well we know, as we say here, c is equal to the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared, and again, I can put that into my CAS nice and easily, or my calculator, and I come out with 13. So c is 13. So using your CAS is going to make life so, so much easier. Now in textbooks, you're going to see this formula here, length of line segments, which looks disgusting, doesn't it? But let's just work out where that came from. We know that this point here, or the length of this line here, this vertical line, was y2 minus y1. And we know that the length of this here is x2 minus x1. So if we have that c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and this is a, I can now write a as y2 minus y1. And I can write b as x2 minus x1. Yeah, because the length of b is just the x coordinates taken away. You've been using that previously. So we now know that c can be rewritten as, well, I know a becomes y2 plus y1 squared. And b can be replaced as x2 minus x1 squared. And hold on a moment, we know that c is basically the length of the line. And so we know that the length of the line is equal to the square root of y2 plus y1 squared. Sorry, that's y2 minus y1 squared, he says, making a mistake. x2 minus x1 squared. My apologies for those of you screaming at the computer going, no! I've got it now. And that's where it comes from. Or, if you didn't understand that, just basically do the length of the line segment equation that write it in your summary book. So... How are we going to do this? Let's do an example. I have the length of a line segment wanting between minus 2, 2, 
and 4 minus 1. So that is my x1, y1. There's my x2, y2. Let's substitute it into my equation. Now I'm not going to draw the square root sign until the end because I never make it long enough. So x2 is 4 minus x1 is minus 2. Now I know for my group, people already made mistakes there because they forgot one of the minus signs. So all I've done here is done x2 minus x1 or squared plus y2, which is minus 1, minus y1 squared, which is minus 2, all squared. Now I need to do my square root sign over that. So what do I do now? Well, I just simplify things. So I'm going to write 4 minus minus 2. So that's going to become 4 plus 2 squared plus minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3 squared. I'm just simplifying this line by line so I don't make a mistake and I get marks if I make a mistake. So that's now going to be the square root of 6 squared plus minus 3 squared. Right, so 6 squared is 36. Minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. So we're going to do plus 9, which gives me the square root of 45. Now, what do I do there? <laughs> Fire up my CAS, basically. So we're going to do control, square root of 45, hit enter and out comes that long answer there. Now, because it says correct to two decimal places, that's going to be 6.71 and no units at this particular situation. I mean, we should really write the word units. We'll come back to that later. See what I'm going to do there? That's Pythag. That's to find the length of the line segment. Find the missing coordinate given 1 and the midpoint. There we go. So I've now got A, which is 4, 2. I got my midpoint of 6, 1, and I want to find my value of B. Now, the way I do this is say, well, how many places have I gone from A to the midpoint? Well, I've gone two across. And because the midpoint's a smack bang in the middle of the x values, then I've got to do another two to go the other way. So the difference between there and there must also be two. So six plus two gives me eight. ka -ching. thank you very much. How have I gone from two to one? Well, I've subtracted one. So bearing in mind that's halfway, I'm going to have to go from here to here and subtract another one, which is going to give me zero. ka -ching. My kids, when I taught them this, said something along the lines of double the M and take away the... Leave that to you. I, I much prefer doing that. It makes life so much easier. Now, how do I use this? Lots of different types of questions, but find the perimeter of a shape correct to one decimal place. And we've got a triangle with vertices. We've got three vertices, right? So we've got a triangle that basically looks something like this. And you're going to say, how do I know that? Uh, I'm just lucky, I suppose. And this one here is 1, 3. Now, you're going to say, how on earth would I find the perimeter? Well, first thing first, perimeter wants you to find the lengths. So you're going to have to find the length between these two points, the length between those two points, and the length between those two points there. He says, drawing a really, really shoddy line. How do you find the length between points? Well, you use Pythag. Now, as a trick, this one here is actually five units. Can you tell why it's five units? Well, they both have a minus 2. They both start with a minus 2. So they're actually on the same horizontal plane. They're basically a vertical line above each other. And it goes from 0 to 5. So the first one there was easy. These, you're going to have to use Pythagoras, yes? Or you're going to have to use the length of the line. So let's say L is equal to the square root of y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. And you do that twice. You're going to do that with this coordinate and this coordinate, and then this coordinate and that coordinate. And then because it's the perimeter, long question, you're then going to add the 5, your length here, and your length there together. And I'm going to leave that to you to have a go, because otherwise this video is never going to end. But it's going to end now, because that is the conclusion of this video. Thank you very much. Darren, Maths Guru, thank you very much for watching. If you can, subscribe. Tell your mates, tell your teachers. Follow me on TikTok. Otherwise, hopefully, I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.